I am Seema and welcome to part 3 of the videos titled Bohr's model for hydrogen atom. We know that Bohr had given his model of atom where he assumed that the nucleus is positively charged and is in the center and the electrons revolve in fixed orbits around the nucleus. As long as the electron is in that fixed orbit, it neither gains energy nor it loses energy. But when it jumps, when it gains, when it absorbs energy, it jumps from a lower energy level to a higher energy level and then it emits the same energy and then jumps back to lower energy levels. And when hydrogen atoms do that, the spectrum of hydrogen is obtained which has multiple lines which can be explained by this behavior that electrons jump from the higher levels to the lower levels. And therefore we get these series of lines which were the Lyman, Balmer, Paskin, Bracket and Fund series. And when the electrons they jump to the first level, they are called the Lyman series, the second level is Balmer and so on. So this was what we had discussed in the previous video. Now in this video, I'll tell you what was his explanation numerically for the line spectrum. This line spectrum that was obtained for hydrogen, how did Bohr explain it numerically? We know that the difference in energy of the two uh, levels or the two stationary states could be written as delta E. And if this difference, there are two energy states, let us say the electron is present at one position and it moves to the other position. So the initial position would be EI and EF would be the final energy level. The energy of the uh, that level where the electron moves finally. So the difference between the two energy levels can be given as the energy level of the final, uh, the EF that is energy level of the final shell minus EI that is energy level of the shell where the electron was present initially, E initial. So we call them EF, E final and EI would be E initial. The difference in energy is given by delta E. We know that EN is given by the formula minus RH bracket that is into 1 upon n square where n is the number of orbit or the principal quantum number or the number of the energy level. The, the level which is closest to the nucleus is the first level. The next one is n is equal to 2 then the next is n is equal to 3 as we had explained in the uh, in the spectrum 2. So en is given by minus rh where rh is the Rydberg's constant and the value of Rh is 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules. So this minus Rh 1 upon n square where n can be 1, 2, 3 is any orbit. So what would delta E be? If En, energy of a shell n is this, then Ef, what would Ef be? Ef would be minus Rh because it is for hydrogen, Rydberg constant for hydrogen, 1 upon n where n is the final shell. So we could call that the n final and the number of shell, the initial shell could be called the n initial, so n i. So we could substitute this into these and write this as delta e would then be equal to e final would be minus r h upon n f square minus because it's a difference between the two energies minus and e i would be minus r h upon n i square. So we get this difference between the final and the initial energy levels. Now there are all minuses. So let us, to remove the minus here, let us flip the entire thing. To remove these, we can just flip these two quantities. So A minus B minus A minus minus B. If we want to remove the minuses, it will be B minus A. It means the same. So let's flip this. Delta E would be equal to Rh, which is Rydberg's constant we've taken it out as common and 1 upon ni square minus 1 upon nf square and the value of Rydberg's constant is 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules into this. So this becomes the equation for the difference in the energies or the energy, uh, the difference between the energies of the two levels where the transition of the electron occurred. So that was the difference in energy. 
Now, the next is how do you calculate the frequency of the electron or the emitted, uh, the emitted uh, what, uh, spectrum line. So, the energy and the frequency of the line that we observe or the radiation emitted. We know that E, energy is equal to H nu. So, difference in energy is also energy that should also be equal to H nu. So, nu, that is frequency, would be equal to delta E upon H. And delta E is what we have just calculated. The delta E is Rh, 1 upon Ni square minus 1 upon Nf square. So, let's do that. Delta E is Rh, 1 upon Ni square minus 1 upon Nf square. And delta E upon H would be upon H, where H is the Planck's constant, whose value is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. So, now we substitute the values of both the constants, that is the Rydberg's constant and the value of H, and nu becomes equal to 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules, which is the Rydberg's constant, and 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joules second, which is the Planck's constant. And this remains the same. So if we calculate this, frequency becomes equal to 3.29 into 10 to the power 15, 1 upon Ni square minus 1 upon Nf square. This is, the, uh, this is how you would calculate frequency of the radiation emitted in the spectral in the spectrum. Then if you have to express it in terms of wave number, we know that C is equal to nu lambda. We know that the speed of light is equal to nu lambda and therefore lambda would be equal to c by nu and wave number is inverse of lambda, 1 upon lambda. Therefore, this would become nu by c. So nu bar becomes nu by c. Nu bar is equal to nu by c which is frequency upon the speed of light. The speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second. So, nu is nu bar is that is wave number is nu by c and nu we have just calculated here. Nu was equal to uh, rh upon h 1 upon ni square minus 1 upon nf square and nu upon c would then become rh upon h c. We just added c in the denominator. So nu bar, if we put the value of light here, the speed of light here, this Rh upon H was already calculated in this equation. It is 3.29 into 10 to the power 15 divided by the speed of light which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second and this value remains the same and when you calculate this, we get nu bar would be equal to 1.09677 into 10 to the power 7, 1 upon ni square minus 1 upon nf square meter inverse, because that is the unit for uh, wave number. If you remember, when Balmer explained his series and he gave a mathematical calculation to explain the Balmer series, he derived this equation where we said that this is the Rydberg's constant for hydrogen. So, Bohr also came to the same conclusion after doing all these calculations. He got the same value of the Rydberg's constant for hydrogen all here. Or rather, for your, it's for your understanding that it is the same value that Balmer had given when he explained the Balmer series. So, this is how numerically he explained, uh, Bohr explained the uh, formation of these spectral lines for hydrogen. Now, in the next video, I'll discuss the drawbacks of the Bohr's model. Then, in one video, one or two videos, we'll solve a few numerical problems before we move on to the quantum mechanical model of an atom. Please stay with me for the next video.